Hi, and welcome back to Simper Adventure. Today I'm gonna to talk about what to pack in your suitcases to take on the Patriot Express or um, on, your, on the plane when you're coming here. Uh, I was kind of winging it. I looked at a few things. I wasn't really sure what I was doing. Um, for the Patriot Express, you're allowed to bring two suitcases per um, person on the flight. On the actual plane, you can bring one carry-on and one personal item. So the carry-on can be a roller bag and the personal item is supposed to go at the feet in front of you. Um, I will say on the Patriot Express, there was tons of overhead space and we didn't have a problem putting our book bags up above our heads as well to give us more foot room. But the foot room was actually really ample on the one that we went on. So the kids kind of kept their book bags down and I put mine above my head. Also, if you have a pet in cabin, you do lose one carry-on bag, like the roller carry-on bag. Um, they tell you to put your personal item above your head and your pet at the floor, so you will lose that one um, carry-on item if you have an in-cabin pet. For us, we had three or four bins, some of the big heavy-duty bins. We got them from Sam's Club and they were about I think about 10 or $12 each. Um, they were very sturdy and they had holes that we could um, zip tie closed. We also had six suitcases, I believe. So four of the bins, six suitcases. My husband did not bring a carry-on because he brought his uniform bag. So that was his carry-on. Um, and then we brought the cat in a carry-on bag. Um, it was a book bag. We've shown that in other videos. The book bag was great. We also brought a cat stroller, which sounds really ridiculous, but it was very useful in the airport because these pets can be heavy. So if you can get a roller bag or, you know, a little umbrella stroller, pet stroller from Amazon, um, that is very useful. It gave him somewhere bigger to hang out as well. Okay. So what did we pack in each of these bags? So the big bins, I really um, took a lot of care to figure out what we needed. Um, one bin actually had all of my son's baseball gear in it because as soon as he got off of ROM, my husband was coaching his little league team and he needed his gear. So one bin had his baseball gear in it as well as what I called the busy box. So it had games. Um, we got the little jewel art. Um, we were just looking for things to keep the kids busy for that two weeks that they weren't allowed to leave the house. So one whole bin was, um, I would say nothing useful, but it was very useful because it kept the kids busy. It had a bag of coloring books and chapter books and things like that. Um, so that was actually quite useful to have that bin, but it did take up a whole um, bin. Another bin had all of our linens in it. So when you move overseas, like here, your sponsor will check out um, all of your lend, your lending locker um, kitchen box, which in that box you will have a small skillet, a large pot, a medium pot, and a small pot, as many plates as you're, you have for family members, as well as um, a cup for each family member, a bowl for each family member, and two forks, two spoons for each family member. And you'll have a strainer, a mixing bowl, a really terrible spatula, a spoon, a can opener. Um, there was steak knives and then there was some dull kitchen knife. Um, as well as a toaster, a coffee maker, Ours actually had um, a reusable basket in it, so you don't need filters, probably. Um, and an ironing board and iron. That was everything that was in that kitchen box. Oh, as well as a dish strainer, to a drainer um, to dry your dishes on. And a cookie sheet with a wire rack that goes on top of it. That was everything that came in that box so anything you need outside of that you do need to put in your luggage so in this box that is all of your kitchen items that you're going to have so if i was going to make recommendations for what you should bring i would bring a big skillet 
Um, I didn't bring a lid for it. I just brought the skillet. And as a matter of fact, I mailed the skillet because you can get reimbursed for shipping stuff here. So I mailed the skillet as well as a whole bunch of kitchen knives because I'm not snobby in the kitchen by any means, but um, you're gonna want some other kitchen knives. So I just, um, I have these ceramic KitchenAid knives and I love them, so I mailed those. And I also mailed some kitchen linens and we mailed those to our sponsor. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot else that I had for the kitchen in that box other than more cooking utensils like my bamboo spatula and some decent spatulas, slotted spoons, stuff like that. Just things that I use all the time in the kitchen. What I wish I brought was an apron. I know that's ridiculous, that's so 50s housewife, but I love my aprons. And now I'm finding stuff all over my clothes while I'm cooking, but it is what it is. Um, I still haven't replaced my apron yet because our household good stuff will be here eventually and I have like 12 aprons in there. So in your stuff, I would definitely bring a couple knives, a couple cooking utensils, and anything you absolutely 100% cannot live with outside of your kitchen. So for linens. When you get your loaner furniture, you get a twin size for all the dependents and a queen size for the service member and spouse. Um, you, you don't get any linens with it, including bathroom linens. So I used uh, vacuum seal bags and I had a full size blanket, a bottom sheet, a pillowcase and pillows for each of us. And that sounds like a lot, but in those vacuum bags, they melt down to nothing. And I was able to use one whole bin, um, basically for those linens. I also brought a towel for each, two bathroom rugs, and I brought these cheap plastic um, shower curtain liners, which did, Hindsight, it was good enough to get us through that first night. I brought shower curtain rings too. Um, but the water pressure here is very strange and the air cool in the house is very strange. So the plastic just kept sticking to us. And so I thought I was gonna use that until our unaccompanied baggage stuff came, but I ended up buying um, microfiber shower curtain liners, just solid white, um, pretty quickly. So I would bring your absolute bare minimum linens including sheets pillows blankets for each bed sometimes your sponsor will help you with these and will provide you know the comforters or things like that but um our sponsor was great i wouldn't depend on a good sponsor that sounds terrible that i would say that but not all sponsors are great so you might be winging it you might be on your own we did bring a blanket for each of ours our beds but our sponsors did offer us blankets um, and then you're gonna want your kitchen, um, your kitchen linen. So if you use like a draining mat or a drying mat, um, hand towels for your bathrooms, um, hot plate holders, um, gosh, oven mitts, rags, things like that. You're gonna want that unless you plan to go out and buy it when you get here. I personally love what I have, so I didn't wanna to have to go out and buy things like that, and I didn't want that expense. So I was just able to pack it, max out your luggage. Some people say they don't like to do that. If you don't wanna do that, pack yourself a nice big box, take it to the post office, and write it off on your travel plan when you get here. You can do that. So um, in our other boxes, we had shoes. We had lots of clothes, and I know that sounds ridiculous, like your unaccompanied baggage is gonna be here quickly, but ours wasn't. Ours didn't get here until last weekend. It literally took, um, from the time it was packed until the time it got here, it was like almost eight weeks. So whatever you have in these bins for clothing is gonna be what you have when you get here. You know, that's, until you get more stuff. So if you're coming and you're starting school immediately or anything like that, go ahead and vacuum seal those bags too. I packed one bag that had enough for us to get from our duty, our, our losing duty station to our gaining. So there was one bag that had enough clothes to get us from that point to this point. Cause you don't want to be in six different bags when you're in Seattle, stay in the night or you get extended and 
you just want to go ahead and have it all in one bag. You need enough toiletries to get you through, enough medicines to get you through. Um, the toiletries you can replenish pretty quickly as long as you've been vaccinated or the sponsor's been vaccinated, they can go. Um, and when I say the sponsor, I mean the service member that you're coming with, not your sponsor that's here. They can go to the grocery store pretty quickly. This is as of August 25th, 2021. The COVID restrictions right now are, is if you are vaccinated, you are able to go from base to base for the first 10 days until you have a COVID test. So you're gonna wanna bring, um, as long as you're on base, you can go to the commissary if you're vaccinated. If you are not vaccinated, um, you have a hard ROM at home for the first 10 days until you get tested. As soon as you get that negative test, then you may go between base to base until that 14 days. Um, soft ROM is that you may go around bases and not stop in town. Hard ROM is you may not leave your house. Also in these bags, we had um, computers. We also brought a PlayStation 5. Um, just because we didn't want that to get on the truck, if there's anything that has a potential to be stolen or is, you know, a kind of a hot item like your coins, your military, um, your coins from your coin case, your expensive jewelry, electronics, things like that, you're going to want to bring those. We also brought two small TVs in our bins and a DVD player. These two small TVs are probably not gonna get used in our house because we do have other TVs coming. So our plan is to go ahead and put it together in our sponsor box and we're going to pass that on for um, anyone that we sponsor so that they may have TVs too. Our sponsor did give us a bigger TV than what we brought. So we were able to take these two smaller TVs and put them in some bedrooms and just have some other places to have downtime and watch other things other than what was on the main TV in the living room. We also brought a couple Alexas because we use those for alarms, we use those for music. We, um, our kids like to ask crazy questions to Alexa, so we brought some Alexas with us. Um, computer cords, any electronics that you deem as really important. So we like our fire sticks and so we brought those. They're small enough to, you know, cram in any nook and cranny. Um, we also brought water shoes and I wish we would have brought snorkel gear, but we didn't because we thought unaccompanied baggage was going to be here quickly. I do recommend bringing a few swimsuits because one is not enough here. <laughs> Like we're in our swimsuits two to three times a week, so to be able to wash them and things like that. Um, when you're packing your clothes, mix and match your clothes. Put them on the bed and make sure that you're not taking one pair of shorts that doesn't match but one shirt. So put them on the bed and put, you know, four shirts with a pair of shorts. Or make sure like you're almost making a capsule wardrobe, really maximizing that space because you. it seems like 10 bags is a lot, but it's really not a lot. What else do you need to know? So when you're packing those bags to go on the plane, these are the important things for your, I would say your personal item, but as long as they're on the plane, I think you're good. Um, it was freezing cold on our flight. Freezing until we stopped in um, Japan and then it was burning hot. But um, we all wore sweatpants. Um, typically I don't wear lounge wear anywhere around military people because that's my husband's um you know his ethic he's old school marine and you don't wear yoga pants to the commissary but i was like today i wear sweatpants and i was glad i did my son chose to wear athletic shorts and he regretted that choice you're going to want a blanket in each bag to wrap around your body or your legs um, as well as a sweatshirt to keep, you know, your arms warm, but you can peel it off when you get to Yakota or whatever, Guam, wherever you're stopping. So make sure you have a blanket for every family member. I also thought it was very useful to have um, neck pillows for each of us. We just clipped them onto our book bag. That was very important. Um, snacks are important because the food on the Patriot Express is not great. It's food. You get something, you might like something on your plate. Um, it is not great and the portions are very small. So make sure you're bringing something substantial in that bag. Um, 
Also, anything you need for pets in that immediate time, you're gonna wanna put that, you know, a small bag of food, a, you know, whatever it is that you need for your pets that are in cabin. Or if you're stopping in Yakota, you have, you know, things to clean up pet waste and things like that so that if your dog needs to use the bathroom once you get out there, you have that with you, even if your dog is under the airplane. Um, also, you're going to want to bring um, a charger, like a charging wire for your devices. You're going to want to preload your devices with, you know, movies or whatever shows from Netflix. Um, our screens all worked, it was great, our charging ports all worked, but I hear that that is not the case all the time, so just go ahead and preload your devices with something so that you're not sitting there for 15 hours wishing you had. I also do recommend bringing a charging box, like a portable battery, um, because sometimes those ports don't work and you have no way to charge your device. Um, aside from food, warmth, and something to do, that's really all you need. Um, I did have a foot hammock. The seats are very tall for someone short like me. So I had a foot hammock that was very helpful. Um, my legs, my ankles were swelling. Um, so if you are short like me, you can get those foot hammocks on Amazon. I use them many times to travel. So it was just something I already had. Also a face mask would be great. An eye mask so that you are, um, that last stop is killer. It's very tiring. So having that face mask while they were offloading people and things um, was very valuable. I just kind of slept through it. I never sleep on airplanes, but it was, um, it was something else. So having that face mask would be good. So um, I think that's about it. Also, your binder, you're going to need your binder um, on your person because you can't get to your luggage before you have to do the custom stuff and you have to show orders. So you're gonna have your orders that you have to show, your pet um, paperwork needs to be with you, as well as your passports. You need to show those when you get to um, Okinawa. And I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff. I think we had to have area clearance with us as well. My husband handled one line while I handled the other. Our kids are older so that's great when you get off the plane here you hop on a bus and it takes you to the terminal another thing you need to know is if you have small children and you have their stroller and you gate check it at the plane when you're in seattle you will not get it for hours so if you have a little baby and your plan is to put that baby right back in the stroller it's not a good plan um, I don't know if ours was different because we were delayed and we had two flights come in the same day, but um, baggage claim was a mess. So, um, you probably will need another way to carry babies around. Carts are hard to come by on the other end. I'm very glad that we brought our own cart for our um, big bin, so that's good. If you have a pet, you automatically get a cart. People are envious of that. Just know that if you get a pet, you get a cart. But if you don't have a pet and you have children, the strollers do not come out gate side. They do not come out separate. They come out when there's room on the belt. So have another plan, have another backup plan. If it's a baby carrier, if it's, I don't, like, I, I just wanna stress that to you. We waited for two hours to get our cat stroller back and we just were done. So we came back the next day to get it. So um, the rest of our baggage had come out and that had not come out. So they can't make any more room on the belt if people aren't getting their stuff. And since we had two flights come in the same day, our stuff was all mixed up. So some of their stuff was just going round and round even though they had come in before. So they didn't get their stuff when they got in. It's kind of a mess and they don't allow sponsors inside the terminal so you'll have to carry everything that you have outside um, to your sponsor so um, that is something good to know that little cart thing that we had was they do have luggage carts in the terminal but they're just really hard to come by because there's so many people at the same time with two pieces of luggage each potentially 10 to 14 pieces per family depending on the size of the family um, so that little luggage thing that we had inside of our um, 
bins that we could put the bins on and then ratchet strap them to carry it was so valuable in this situation. It was, you know, worth the $16 we paid for it. It was, people just looked at us like in envy because it was, it made the trip so much smoother. So, um, if you need that, comment here. I will link that for you if you are looking for it. It's an Amazon buy. I have nothing to gain by telling you about it except that you will remember me when you're walking through the airport with ease, thinking, wow, I'm so glad we did this. I think on the way home, we plan to use just bins, no suitcases, because it was maybe one suitcase just for, you know, the in-betweens, but it was so much easier with those bins than, you know, everybody else said that they like the wheels on the luggage, but I really think that the bins are easier with that little cart that just folds up, puts right back inside of it. You don't need any parts. Um, if you've done this recently, comment below, help others out. You know, we don't need to do this alone. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. If you have hints for, you know, what to pack and your, your luggage that you're bringing to Okinawa, please do it. Um, you just, like, we're all here to help each other. So please share any, you know, little tips and advice you have because some, some people are doing this for the first time. So we've never moved to Oconus. This was our first. And some people have, you know, this is their first duty station ever. So let's help everybody out and let's give each other some hints and tips because this is hard, y'all. This is not easy. Um, I'm glad to be here. The island is beautiful. And when you get here and you get settled and the first time you lay eyes on that water, it will all be worth it. So until next time from Simper Adventure.